Oh, hey buddy, want a Starbucks gift card? Yeah, you like that? You can buy a latte. Buy a latte with that gift card. Pumpkin spice season, son! Hi everybody. Welcome to Landscape Rescue with Stuart Moore. I'm Stuart Moore. Well, obviously. And I'm here at Affinity Estates where this is kind of my pet project. It's where I spend a lot of my own personal time. It's where I shoot a lot of videos for you guys. And it's really very close to my heart in the sense that I get to be part, or my landscape design gets to be part of a lot of memories and you got to think you're not the one creating the memories but you're the backdrop in all those memories so when a bride takes a picture in front of your flower bed the space that you've created you are locked in forever your design is locked in forever so it's an important and it's a big responsibility and uh, that's kind of the way I look at that is really just diving in and thinking about stuff and maybe leaving some party hibiscus that you should have planted three days ago but it rained um in place and just kind of like dr i drive by and just kind of look and be like mm, yeah that will work um tweak stuff a little bit so you know getting comfortable with the idea of this bed and and i think that's where i'm at now with it is um i like the idea of having some hardy hibiscus in here so let me give you the general breakdown and the thought process to this one as you can see, it is literally just a gravel bed. There's some hodgepodge, like, I don't know if a lot of this stuff was just here when they bought the place or if they just kind of popped stuff in, but there's like a random variegated liriope just kind of like hanging out in the middle of the bed. Um, there's some crepe myrtles that I don't necessarily know what size they are. Nobody can tell me when I ask when I do the inquiries, the landscaper gumshoeing that you've got to do. A detective, sometimes referred to as an investigator, called in for specific situations, a detective collects evidence and analyzes the facts. To figure out what it is so you can design around it, or are we pulling it out? This is a very high visibility area, and I just don't think we need to waste the square footage on something that we're waiting to do, you know. Uh, if there was a spot, I could just pull it out and just put it over in a corner somewhere and just let it go but I mean you have three to four weddings a week here you know like that square footage is worth a lot of money um, if you think about it like that right so being the backdrop to somebody's memory if I want to poke milk great myrtle it's just this tall and it's two years old um, probably not not when I can put a hibiscus in the place of it and have it in two years with dinner size plate flowers on it, knocking everybody's socks off in, the, in 105 degree weather. I mean, that's what, that's what a hardy hibiscus brings to the table. And there's so many different varieties and you can just really mix it up. There's some lilies that are kind of poked in. I really wish there was more of those, you know, there's, there's three on each side of a saber gold juniper. And I, you know, the saber golds, if that's in fact what they are, I think that's, you know a, a very common golden juniper to to carry around here they get big i mean they're not uh you know the one over there on the corner is going to start getting into that asphalt i mean it's going to start cutting into their driving space there's a false spirea over here which is doing pretty good but they just kind of do their thing i mean it's I, i'm not impressed or disappointed in a false spirea i think they're pretty i think they have great foliage and they bring a lot of unique color if you don't want a uh, you know, you don't want that monstrosity of a Nandina, a heavenly bamboo, Nandina domestica. You don't want to do that. A lot of times a, a false spirea will kind of fill that need. Uh, or even like a tiger eye sumac has that same kind of pinnate leaf. Um, but they just get enormous. So um, anyway, so I, I'm not necessarily not thinking that that's a good idea, but I just, that spot you know like uh, uh emerald arborvita uh i don't know if you can tell but this has been kind of a source of contention for me for a while the irony of this whole thing is that this is part of that procession area but what i noticed yesterday when i was out here spraying weeds i got here a little too late i thought my little boy and i could uh come out and he could ride his scooter because there's a lot of places you know 
hard surfaces for him to ride around in and I could keep my eye on him. And um, it uh, it was not happening because when we pulled up, everybody else was pulling up and the place filled up fast. But what I noticed is that everybody in the wedding party kind of hangs out kind of right in this area here. And they mill around and they just kind of form their big groups and they talk and they haven't seen each other in a while. So they're catching up and they're all standing kind of in this area. And uh, you know, bridesmaids were running out, grabbing people and bringing stuff in. And, and I just thought, you know, this needs to be the next phase uh, because it is such a high visibility area. And again, think about that. If you're doing commercials, if commercial projects, if you're doing things like that, think of these high, a lot of your energy needs to go in those high visibility areas. What does it look like from a distance? What's it gonna look like up close? But you can do some more petite stuff as you're working your levels down, right? As you're working your layers down, you can have that more petite stuff kind of up close in high visibility areas. So around the edges here and places like that, we can do things like bleeding heart and we can do things like Pelleboris and things to that nature that, that really have to be up close to to really appreciate the the intricacies of that flower, that particular flower. So uh, just kind of around one of the areas with procession, the procession area where, where the bride walks through and she walks around. And if I have time, I'll show you guys that bed. It's got balloon flower in it, you know, which from a distance is not that big of a deal, but up close, wow, what a, what a showstopper up close. So, um, so this is kind of the next phase I'm gonna start working on him a little bit to let me do uh, let me get some plant material for this area right here um, he's really on me about these emerald arborvita and the deer just wipe them out bagworm so there's a lot of stuff that I need to do around here but that's kind of this is kind of the next like organically just kind of let this evolve but just popping stuff in i think a lot of this was just pre-existing from the last owner so let's get into it it's starting to get a little smoky i don't want to uh and when i say smoky i mean hot i don't want to be out here all day <laughs> doing this in full sun so uh let's get to it let me grab some tags so i can show you guys uh what we're planting this blackberry merlot is kind of a wine colored flower with purple leaves the starry starry night is kind of like a peppermint stripe so white with the pink uh, margins and pink veins and purple leaves and then uh, midnight marvel which has some greenish purple leaves in it and uh, and more of a red flower so I'm pretty excited I think I saw P. Allen Smith talking about uh, Midnight Marvel, or maybe it was Laura from Garden Answers. I can't remember, but uh, you know, one of the big YouTubers was. Everybody loves Hardy Hibiscus. Everybody. So there's no. Uh, I'm not taking any big risk by putting. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, six Hardy Hibiscus in here. Okay, so the hibiscus is going in here, and see, I as I was digging this out, I went and you know, reset up the camera so I could show you. So when these plants decay, they put the carbon back in. Anyway, it turns into organic matter. All of everything kind of turns into organic matter. And you start looking, you know, that is what the weeds are growing in, right? This, so, I mean, if you, if you look, if I just leveled this out to where you could see, I mean, you have that much area where the weeds can germinate. So that's why pre-emergent is going to be important. Uh, all the leaves, all the acorns, I mean, you're all the way down here, I just saw an acorn. Um, all that stuff kind of breaks down or grows, right? So um, that's why weed barrier doesn't stop weeds. Weeds are a little easier to pull out uh, to a certain point. I mean, think about if this was mulch, if you were using weed barrier with mulch, You've got this much mulch and this much of it is decayed organic matter. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to be able to maintain weed free landscape. You just, you're not going to be able to do it. So, um, what I like to do here is, all right. So you got to cut the weed barrier. It's always nice to have a very sharp 
razor blade or something like this. Okay, so, boy, this probably was sharp at some point. It's not anymore. So once I've got that, I usually just tuck this back like that. Not that it's any real, oh, geez Louise. I've never been in this bed, but I've never started digging around in this bed before. So now there's more gravel underneath the weed barrier because it was probably a weedy mess. And somebody said, you know what? <sighs> Let's just put weed barrier over it and put more gravel down. So if we're really, really lucky, there's gonna be more weed barrier underneath this gravel. If we're just really, just luck is on our side, or better yet, because it, it wouldn't be the first time I've seen this, an old parking lot, that would be great. Um, We are, we are so lucky. Guys, I can't believe you're here for this ecstasy that I'm about to go through. More weed barrier. Oh, thank God. Oh, I was so worried there for a second that I was gonna be able to do this in a, in a timely fashion. So it doesn't even matter if you buy a power planter or not. When you run into crap like this, good luck. It's always been laughable for me, 20 year weed fabric. Well, this is 20 year weed fabric. I put the good stuff down, I put 20 year weed fabric on there. Can you imagine the amount of organic material and soil you would have on top of weed barrier 20 years later? And this is what ends up happening because people don't use pre-emergent. You can tell I'm super happy. So I'm stoked. I get to do this for every single hole I'm digging. Okay. that weed barrier well if nothing else this hole is going definitely going to be well drained ideally i'm going to put drip out here um, so that way we can with quick connect so we can just plug in and go plug and go that's the best way landscapers homeowners anybody that's watching if you've got the fastest way to diminish somebody's excitement about a landscape project is to have them spend all year watering every other day or weeds. Those are the two ways to take the wind out of somebody's sails from doing bigger projects. So, um, let that be, I think that's the, big, the, the two biggest things. Trimming, I feel like could be an issue for some people, um, especially if they have shoulder issues, but I hear watering and and uh, watering and weeds are the, the two big things that people don't want to do anything. It takes the wind out of their sails pretty quick. Jeez Louise.
There's kind of some soil in here. All right. All right, I always tap out the rice hulls and the fertilizer and stuff that's on the top into my backfill. Put the plant in. Just come around the top a little bit. Make sure we're down to where that root flare is. Jeez oh, Louise. All right, we're not touching it anymore. You can plant hardy hibiscus pretty, pretty deep. So on the outside of the hole, guys, we're putting our inoculant. That's just this Dr. Earth Root Zone Starter Fertilizer has a true biotic micronutrient beneficial fungus beneficial bacteria inoculant all organic incorporate that into the soil profile whenever you can and then on a three gallon I like to do four to your fertilizer tablets northeast south and west Oh, jeez Louise. I know I keep saying that. And you can plant party hibiscus a little on the deep side. They like the water though. So we're gonna need to do drip for sure. But I found in my experience that you do drip, for somebody who doesn't have a drip, so for somebody who doesn't have an irrigation system, you can do drip with quick connects. And I always buy the customer hose. I always buy, you know, I always buy everything. I mean, obviously you charge them for that, but that's kind of the, kind of one of the benefits because all they have to do is run out and just quick connect off, roll up the hose or, you know, crank the hose quick connect back on I mean you can make it really easy and then you know have them come back three hours later and turn it off so anyway guys this is a hardy hibiscus I got five more to plant I am not going to bring you along for that journey because I don't know how much cussing I'm going to be and I want to keep this PG
we are done. Thank you guys for watching Landscape Rescue. I'm Stuart Moore. I appreciate you letting me into your home to talk about plants. Go get some hearty hibiscus. They're awesome.